Now your third major one to do with trig is what happens if we have, and it's another fraction, and it's another one with x squared, but a couple of differences. One, there's no square root this time, and the second one is instead of being subtract, I actually get plus. Now for this type of question, this is where we're going to use a substitution of tan. Now they should give you that in the question at this stage, um, but I think it's one that you should also be unaware aware of, just in case you have to solve it without. So we're going to differentiate. So the differential of tan is secant squared. And then if I solve, oops, if I solve for dx and secant squared u du, now I can go ahead and substitute. So 1 dx is just going to be this. 25 plus x squared, so 25 plus 25 tan squared. And notice I've got a common factor here of 25. So I want to use that. And I forgot my du, so let me quickly add that. So I'm at this point here, and then I've got to look to see if there's another identity I can use. And you should recognize 1 plus tan squared as secant squared. So this is going to cancel, and what I get left with is 5 over 25, which is just simply 1 fifth. So the integral of 1 fifth is 1 fifth u plus c. Now I'm going to go back to my original part to substitute back in here. So if x equals 5 tan u, then what that says is that x over 5 equals tan u. And then if I do tan to the negative 1 here, tan to the negative 1 of x over 5 would equal u. And then I can substitute that into my answer down here. So the 1 fifth tan to the negative 1 of x over 5 plus c. And same sort of thing, we could be doing this question with limits as well if we have a definite integral. Um, but certainly questions involving substitutions with sine, cosine and tan, you should certainly make sure you're familiar with.